Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and today we're going to talk about how to create a model in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. So first, let's talk about what is a model. A model is a grouping of objects, could be forms, tables, classes, any object we can create within D365 can be put in a model. If you're used to working in another language such as C Sharp, you might be used to creating a solution and a project, putting all your code in one solution or group of projects, compiling those together into a single solution. Well, in the case of Dynamics 365, it is so big, there are so many classes and tables and objects, it would take a longer time to try to compile those all together. Um, and it would be too huge of a project or solution to put them all in one solution as well. So instead, we have these models, which are groupings of those objects together. You might have created those objects over many projects and solutions, but we can essentially associate those objects with a model and then compile those together into a package and deploy those forward to other environments. So again, it's kind of a grouping of objects. We can look at base Microsoft code. In this case, I've looked for the sales table in the application explorer, and I can see this sales table table. And the way I can tell what model this code is a part of is I can look at the value between the square brackets. So I can see that the sales table table is part of the application suite model. And base Microsoft code is stored uh, across a bunch of different models. However, um, as a developer, we can't actually um, modify base Microsoft code. We either have to extend base objects or um, base code using chain of command or event handlers, that kind of thing. And that new code, that extension code, needs to be put in our own model. So as a developer, one of the first things we need to do is create a new model for where we can put our code. So let's start with that. Um, the way we can do that is that we can go up to the top um, menu in Visual Studio and look for either Dynamics 365 or if you're in um, Visual Studio 2019, they've moved it under Extensions. So under Extensions, you'll see Dynamics 365 and then you're gonna wanna select Model Management and then Create model. There's some other options in here that we'll um, cover in separate videos. So we'll say create model and this wizard pops up with several steps that's going to ask for information for us. First, the add parameters page. We can give our model name so I can call it, you know, my model um, and I'll just call it two because I think I've already created one called my model and then we can give it um, the name of our company. So I, I'm just gonna type in my company into here. Next, we can give it a layer. This is something that's kind of left over from previous versions of um, Dynamics AX, um, and so it's not as important anymore. I recommend you set this to either CUS or ISV or potentially a var layer. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to cuss for right now. It would take a longer explanation to kind of explain what this was used for, but I don't think it's that important anymore. The version number you can set if you'd like, or you can just leave it blank. And then the description, you can fill in a description of what type of functionality you expect to be in this model. So if you're creating a bunch of features related to postage and handling, you could put in a description in there. So I'm just gonna type my model description right now we can come back and change this lastly the model display name lets us give it a display name so you can essentially take the same um, name of your model and add spaces if you like um, to give it a more uh, readable name finally click the next button to go to the next screen on this screen we're given two choices we can create a new package or we can select an existing package um, I believe this second option is really left over uh, for some legacy reasons. Um, now, if you're creating a new model, you really should always select this create new package option. Then we can select next. 
This third screen is really important and I'll take a minute to explain it. Um, any objects that we create is, as part of our new model, if they reference other objects we create, say we create a new form and a new table and that form has a data source that references that new table we created, that's fine. They're all objects defined within our model. However, if our new form references objects that are defined in other models, we need to make sure our model has a reference to the model um, that defines that object. So for instance, if I had a new form that used sales table as a data source, I could look up and see that sales table is part of the application suite model and I would need to make sure that I come down here and I check the application suite um, model as a reference model. If I don't do that, I'm going to get compile errors when I try to um, use objects that are defined in another model. It's okay if at this point in time you don't know what objects you're going to reference. You can always come back in here and add more. But it's important to know that this is the screen that you would need to change if you're getting compile errors um, saying that you're referencing objects that are not referenced in your model. As a default, it's recommended you always select application platform and application foundation, um, but it really depends on kind of what code you are um, referencing in your code. As you can see, there's a whole lot of different models um, within the base product, but many of these models um, you may not need to reference as part of your code. Um, and the more you check in here, it just means it's gonna take a little longer when you compile your code. So for now, I'll just leave these two selected and click Next. Finally, we get to the summary screen. The summary screen is gonna recap what we've already done, but it's also gonna give us a couple more options. First, there's this create new project option. If we leave this checked, the system's gonna create a new solution and project for us as soon as we finish this wizard. This is kind of nice, it saves us a couple steps. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this for now so you can see what we would do if this was not checked. Secondly, there's this checkbox that says, make this my default model for new projects. This again can save us some time. So typically, after you've created a new project, you need to set that project's model property. And that tells the system that any new objects you create as part of that project will be part of the model you've specified. Um, and so by checking this checkbox, it means that all new projects we create will use our new model, in this case, my model two. Um, this is pretty common for you to create a model and want to code for a while, add objects, add code only to this new model. Um, so this just saves you some time and make sure that you're adding your code in the right location. So I'll go ahead and leave this one checked. Finally, I'm gonna click finish. This will go ahead and create our new model for us. Before we kind of take the next step, I wanted to show you what's happened behind the scenes. Behind the scenes, if we open File Explorer and we're in a cloud-hosted development environment, I can go to the K drive. And within the K drive, there is a folder, AOS Service. This is the folder where all of our code for D365 is stored. And specifically, I can look in Packages Local Directory in here, it is going to be a folder for every model in the system. You can see all of these folders uh, include the base Microsoft code, but then if we scroll down a little further, we can actually find the model we just created. So I created my model too. Within this, there's a few files, or excuse me, a few folders that define the properties of our model, what they reference, and a couple other capabilities. Um, there's another folder named My Model 2, which if we drill into contains all of the code we've added to this model. So right now, um, there is a subfolder for every single type of object we can create within the Application Explorer, but all of them are empty right now. 
They don't contain anything. But as we create code of these various types, new XML files will be created that contains the definition of our code or our forms, our objects. They'll be in these folders. So you don't specifically need to know this piece, but I find it interesting to know that all of this code ends up in these folders. This code does need to be checked into source control so that eventually all this code can be compiled together um, along with any other models into an all-in-one package. That package can be uploaded to Lifecycle Services online and then applied to another environment. That's how we promote code um, to another environment. All right, so lastly, I wanna show you how you create a new project now that we've got the model created. I can select File, New, and then Project. I'm gonna get a pop-up asking me what type of project I wanna create. In this case, I wanna create a finance operations project, and I'll select Next. Then I'm gonna get a screen asking me for my project name. I'm gonna call it my second project, because you can see I've created a project already right here. And it's gonna also set the solution name. You can specify the location of where you wanna store these projects. I'm just gonna leave this as default. And then I'm gonna click the Create button. The system's gonna create my project and because we set that flag to make this new model our default model, I can see already um, that our new model is set on this project. I can see it between these square brackets right here, my model two. But if that was not the case, if this was defaulting to say fleet management, um, you can come in here by right clicking on the project and then selecting properties and then in the model property, you can change this to be your new model. That ensures that any code, any new objects that you are creating as part of this, ob this project um, are associated with this model. Lastly, one side note, if you're creating new tables or views or data entities or extended data types, basically anything that affects the SQL database, you do want to set this synchronized database on build to true. This ensures that when you build your code in Visual Studio, it is also updating um, the underlying SQL database. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And then that's it. From here, we can create objects just like we normally would. So kind of in recap, we learned how to create a new model. We understand what a model is and that it can have references to other objects that exist in other models. We also understand that models are part of the process for building them into packages that eventually can get deployed to other environments. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.